a crisp day in Melbourne, a city that feels a world away from Manus Island and home to a most unlikely critic of Australia's refugee detention centre there. Rod St George is not an activist or a refugee advocate. He's a former prison guard turned manager for the security firm G4S. So why have you uh, decided to talk? Uh, t no one else was talking, Mike. Uh, it, uh, you, kept, you kept waiting, expecting someone else would. Yeah, yeah. I think if finally... Just... He's throwing away his career to speak out about his experiences working in the Manus Island Refugee Centre. I didn't expect it to be run uh, as, as a prison, uh, worse than a prison, in fact. His account of refugees being sexually abused and tortured in custody, with the full knowledge of staff there, is a harrowing one. They'd be returned to the compound, they'd be uh, assaulted or raped again and in... His bitterness is not towards his fellow guards, but the Department of Immigration officials who run the camp. This is the sort of thing that his assessment really of them is shockingly blunt. What was your view of them? I've worked for it with some of the, some of the worst uh, criminals Australia has, and um, and even they have a clearer sense of decency than what I witnessed there. Earlier this year, Rod St George took up the position as the compliance manager for G4S's contract to provide security on Manus Island. I spent uh, almost 10 years in the uh, prison industry in uh, two states uh, and I managed uh, two tenders uh, for the company that I was working for in Manus. He was in charge of occupational health and safety issues, OHS, and, uh, as well as the risk assessment officer for both inmates and guards. For the safety of everybody. After a month, everybody. he resigned. When did you first realise that something was amiss or when, when did it turn for you after you got the job? What was your first sort of uh, moment of disquiet? I suppose it was a brewing thing and that uh, finally uh, reached a uh, pinnacle in, uh, in my time uh, in, in uh, mid-April with many uh, uh, self-harms. Uh, in one day, um, and then several of the, the guards were, were assaulted. One man was kicked unconscious. Um, they've reached a, a point where they can't tolerate it anymore. There's no media coverage, there's no legal representation. Uh, it's just become a, a dark and dirty secret. Two months ago, Dateline went to Manus to report on the rumours that were swarming around it and to try and get inside the facility. But I can't get much closer than this. Not a single journalist has been inside the centre since it opened last August. That seems a little strange to me. It could be the house of horrors that some people describe it as. It could be the Sheraton Hotel, but there's no way of telling from out here. Australian officials from the refugee centre went to extreme lengths to prevent us from getting inside Manus. We were chased. Yeah, it looks like we've got, uh, we've got company. Yeah, where are the rest of your friends? Threatened. What have we done wrong? Arrested and electronically tracked. It's here, you just, just plug it here. Even though every level of the PNG government, from the Prime Minister down, wanted us to see inside the facility. There's no restrictions on our part, and I can assure you that uh, you are free to go to Manus any time you want to. The office of the then minister, Brendan O'Connor, maintained the absurdity that Australia welcomed inspection of the site, but that, unfortunately, PNG did not. Ma'am, ma'am, it's Mark Davis from uh, SBS TV. A position maintained with a straight face by Australia's High Commissioner to Papua New Guinea. As far as you're aware, the Australian government has no problem with uh, access to the... The, Australian, the Papua New Guinea government is the administrator of the centre and um, it is um, on their, it's on their land and uh, um, we, so, we, we'll have a discussion with them about that. So theoretically if they're happy with it, it, it yes, shouldn't be a problem? Yes, It's absolutely not true uh, on our part that uh, we have placed any restrictions on anybody uh, to uh, travel to Manus to report on anything. It seems that unpalatable truths rarely shake the Department of Immigration the most media-hardened unit in the government. 
ministers come and go, but the department and its policies roll on. Question, and there's a good reason why. Tony Burke has recently been appointed as minister. This is the first time media access to Manus has been raised with me. Right. Uh, we're talking about access within another country. Well, it's not the first time it's been raised with your uh, with your department. Uh, oh, that's or, true. Or, or but my, my department has existed for more than 50 years, I suspect. Uh, and there would be a host of things that have been raised with them well, that haven't been raised stick, with me. Let's, in, stick with in, the in the the let's stick with the last year. It's been uh, 11 months since uh, Manus uh, opened. Not a single journalist has uh, been there. Does that seem unusual to you? Well, you've you've raised something that I will I will raise with others and find out what the reason is. We wondered then what the big secret was that needed to be so hidden. I thought the government may have been embarrassed by poor sewerage and leaky tents, but that's the least of it, according to Rod St George. Words really can't describe. Uh, I, I, I've never, uh, I've never seen human beings uh, so destitute, so helpless, uh, and so hopeless before. I, I took the, the position with every intent of making the place a safer environment, but it proved quite rapidly to be an impossibility. In Australia, it probably, the facility couldn't even serve as a dog kennel. The owners would be jailed. Our previous story revealed what appeared to be disturbing levels of self-harm at Manus. I mean, it's very extreme to kill yourself or cut yourself. Why, why, why is it happening now? Is it because... Exactly, they couldn't. Yeah, exactly. They say we can't tolerate this place. This place is such a hell. And we're going to stay here for a long time. It's better we die here and... Local guards in the centre confirmed for the first time that self-mutilation was not a sporadic or rare event. They go crazy, cutting themselves up, trying to hang themselves up. People are trying to kill themselves in? Yeah, of course. Recently? Yeah. Uh, what, well, you have to cut the... Cut the rope and save them. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and uh, other, would you say what they're cutting? They get a piece of metal, like wire, or something and cutting themselves. Suicide attempts and self-harm are not unknown in Australia's refugee detention regime. Definitely a sign of extreme distress, possibly attention seeking, but what is unquestionable to Rod St George People do desperate things. is that the self-harm rates at Manus are totally off the scale in comparison to other detention centres. The department uh, doesn't confirm or um, deny reports of self-harm and uh, attempted suicides, but uh, are these uh, acts occurring there? Are they common there? Very common, uh, almost daily. Uh, I, I had uh, just previous to going to Manus left a detention centre where there were approximately 600 uh, so twice as many than were at Manus, and we didn't have the amount of uh, incidences or uh, self-harm in a week that we would see at Manus in a day. Your department won't release those, uh, those figures, but are they provided to you? Do you get those statistics which suggest how many acts of self-harm are occurring there? No, I, I have no doubt I'll be able to get hold of that information, and I will do so. With self-harm instances, I think there is a, a very careful approach we need to have to any instances of self-harm. We certainly must never create a situation where, where there, an impression is given that self-harm is actually a pathway to get a changed outcome. Uh, if you do that, you create, in, well, you create expectations and potentially at worst incentives that are horrific and affect many more people than the person who is engaging in self-harm. The staff at Manus reflect the Minister's view that no one should be rewarded for self-harm. No privileges and certainly no departures from Manus. A harsh but rational pursuit of the government's policy. Who speaks for those people? 
But to Rod St George's disgust, the same policy was applied to victims of harm as well. Up to half a dozen young men who he believed were being assaulted and sexually abused in the compound. Detainees who are being assaulted in their tent at night or in the ablution blocks in broad daylight. Victims knowingly left at the hands of their tormentors in a half-built camp with no separate secure zones. Not enough staff to protect them and a management team from the Department of Immigration that refuses to send them off the island against the advice of St George and his security team. There was nothing that could be done for uh, these uh, young men uh, who were considered uh, vulnerable, uh, which in many cases is just a euphemism for men who were being raped. Um, they had to stay where they were. The management team would meet, what, every morning, I assume? You're reporting there's been instances of uh, rape, mm -hmm. constant rape for some of those men. You're reporting attempted suicides. Quite specifically, I'm interested, you're giving that information to the Department of Immigration. What are those officials doing, saying, how are they reacting? It, look, it was obvious that everyone was way in over their head, that we did not have the, uh, the facilities uh, or the expertise uh, to, to prevent what was happening. Uh, we might separate people in those circumstances on the mainland, but there aren't any facilities that manage to do that. So these people who have been assaulted uh, are forced to remain. Back in the tent? Back in the tent. That's a pretty hard thing to do to a guy that uh, has come to you and said he's been assaulted, and, and mm. you have to say, back under the canvas. You know? Right. There was nowhere else for them to go, and it was made uh, quite. Because no one leaves Manus. No one leaves Manus. That was that was. That's that, the yeah. that's the central message. No one leaves Manus. Yeah. Whatever happened. Yeah. This, these are the sorts of things that will happen at Manus. Though, if your friends and family are considering coming to Australia, the same way that you did, there's a very good chance they could end up here. In this kind of hell. Mm. Did it occur to you at the time? How is it that uh, guys like you, former prison guards, are having an emotional response to this? and immigration officials, government bureaucrats, in your view, weren't? Well, that, that was something that shocked me, Mark. Uh, I thought all people have, uh, have an innate understanding of right and wrong um, and the capacity to act in a humane manner. But I simply didn't see that from members of the department. We talk about this as, a, as an island that's you know, 700 kilometres north of Port Moresby in the Bismarck Sea. But if this was happening next door, if you knew that there were people next door being raped and you said nothing, you'd be complicit. I, did you, feel, did you feel complicit being there? I, uh, I suppose being an Australian and knowing that this is what my government is doing, that my government has sanctioned this, made me feel uh, ashamed. Yeah. And I've said as much to, to my wife. There are multiple accounts of sexual assault occurring within the single male compound uh, at Man Manus Island. Victims of those sexual assaults on the instructions of your staff, not the guards, on the instructions of your staff, are that they are to be sent back to the compound and where they're being assaulted uh, again. Is, is he prepared to provide that information he to me? He is prepared to provide that information. Okay, then, then I, I, I want to have it as soon as possible. I need to hear the very specific allegations. I need to make sure they're properly investigated. And if the implementation of different policies needs to be reviewed as a matter of that, then that needs to occur. Does it suggest that there's been a, a, a collapse either in the information chain or in the duty of care uh, from within your ministry? 
I understand you're a new minister, but you well, are well, responsible. Not, not you that, are you, responsible for your ministry. No, not only that, you you have on camera the vision of the first time I was told of this particular allegation, and you have on camera my precise response as to how I intend to deal with it, and that's that's what I intend to do. The minister's willingness to consider an injustice may be refreshing, and find a way of fixing. But he's only been in the job a few weeks. I'm not comfortable with it being described. Inheriting a department that's well versed in secrets, stonewalling, and denial. The first stage is for me to properly gather the facts. Manus was rebuilt and opened in a hurry. It was Julia Gillard's response to the opposition's rejection of her Malaysia solution. The small block of jungle solution was meant to be a temporary one, but almost a year on, it's still being patched up to keep it functioning, albeit as the most dysfunctional of all the refugee centres. It's malarial, it's cramped, it's hot, it's unsafe, and it seems to be driving its inhabitants insane. But perhaps most bizarrely of all, it didn't need to be like this. Now people are very friendly people and they welcome that opportunity. PNG offered a much cheaper and much more humane alternative. As a government, we have uh, stated to uh, the Australian government that uh, uh, the refugees and the asylum seekers on Manus can freely engage with the local community. You want them out of the uh, Of course, the we want them to move around freely within the community. They don't necessarily have to be confined at the centre. And the locals seem to embrace the Prime Minister's idea too. Well, it is, we, are, we are dealing with human beings and I uh, feel sorry for them. Yeah. So I want to care for them and look after them. They are free, make sure that they, they can get them out, they, go they back can... To they can help they us, we can help them, free people, like and then me. we process them, and then they can go back, yeah, yeah, yeah. you see? How Australia turned a generous offer of a processing centre into a heavily fortified but inadequate bush prison is unclear. It's also unclear what lottery 300 individuals lost to be brought here and told they won't even be interviewed for four years when they know that most refugees are issued bridging visas within months. They cannot fathom why they are there uh, and why the process is taking so long. Could you get any sense of how these people are selected? I mean, why? I mean, these 300 souls are put on Manus. Any, did you get any sense of how they're selecting them to put them here? No. Were they offenders of some uh, no. sort? Or were they violent uh, characters uh, to be placed there? Nope. No, the, uh, the intelligence reports uh, indicate that, uh, for the most part, these are, there may be exceptions, but for the most part, uh, they had no uh, previous uh, uh, violence uh, in the history. So as best you can tell, they're picked at random mm -hmm. and, uh, and sent to this island while others are, are released? Correct. <laughs> If they weren't violent when they came, it seems that some of them certainly are now. Rod St George's concern is not just for the victims of violence inside the centre, but for the Australian and local guards that work for him. Equally vulnerable in a poorly built and designed facility. It sounds like the place is a tinderbox, uh, though. It, it, it feels like uh, it could uh, explode. I, I believe it's just a matter of time. Uh, it's, it's known uh, to the security staff um, that there are, there are many, many weapons um, there that have been uh, uh, obtained through various means. And I'm not talking about the, uh, the, the homemade you know, prison-built shivs or anything like that. These are um, manufactured weapons that have been purchased for them. Uh, and that, of course, places uh, all the staff in danger. What, what sort of weapons? You say manufactured weapons? Uh, knives, predominantly. Yeah. So there's an expectation amongst the staff that something like this could happen or is about to happen? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. The detainees are quite open that there will come a time when uh, where they will break out and that people will be killed. They 
they are quite open about that. And you may have no basis to uh, trust or, or otherwise the information you're receiving from Manus, but are you satisfied to date that you are receiving a full and complete picture in the briefings you're receiving about Manus? My, my preference is to go there myself. Uh, I'm currently in the process of working out how quickly I'll be able to do that. I've never, in any of the portfolios I've had, worked on the basis that you can glean from a departmental briefing the same part, sort of information that you get by visiting as a minister. Is it possible that the government doesn't know how bad Manus is? Is it possible the minister doesn't? I've no doubt whatsoever that the immigration uh, minister does not know just how bad it is. Do you think there's incentive for the bureaucrats that are there to disguise what's yeah. going on? Yes. Yeah, what, what gives you that impression? The, the briefings that we had, uh, especially those uh, about uh, victims of sexual assault and rape and so on and so forth, the responses that we saw from some members of the department um, and one person in particular led us to believe uh, that this was not a matter that needed to go any further. You know, I think he, he felt that he had, he had dealt with it sufficiently um, and that any report would be it would be watered down after that. And this is an immigration official mm. based in the camp. Yes. Yeah. Manus Island is an incongruous location for a detention centre. It's probably the gentlest place in all of PNG, and many of the local guards were shocked by what they were seeing in the camp. I didn't think it would be like this. I think they're not prisoners. They're not prisoners. For you, they're not. Their attempts to warn Australia that something was amiss was not well received by the Department of Immigration two months ago. Could be a roadblock up ahead. No, it's not, not called ahead, right? Yeah. After our story went to air, a witch hunt was launched against the local staff. We believe the camp police unit used our vehicle's tracking device to trace the places and houses we visited. That's it, is it? You found it? Mm -hmm. Serious? Six staff were suspended. One was sacked, wrongly accused in both his view and ours. It's yet to be seen if the government acts any differently in response to Rod St George. What was the, the moment where you went, I can't work here anymore, I, I have to get out? The, the uh, look, probably, probably the picture of two men that had been coerced to sew their lips together. Um, they, uh, again, it's, it's, uh, it's an unusual environment, causing people to do unusual things. And um, standover tactics are, are quite rife there. What do you mean people were coerced to do their lips? There was a, there was a man um, uh, who was a, was, a, was a heavy, I suppose, by prison terms. Um, and he had a few men around him. Uh, they were the, they were tough guys of the compound, and uh, they <clears throat> they wanted to make a statement, um, and and so forced a couple of guys to sew their lips together. Why? You know, they weren't going to do it themselves. The statement had to be made. So they they basically stood over a couple of guys and made sure they did it. Did it to them or the guys did it themselves? The understanding is they did it themselves, but one man in particular, he had already been the victim of torture at the hands of these same men. His left ear had, had been perforated. Uh, they'd been pouring solvents in his ear for some time. Um, this is insane. It is insane. Some days later, I think it was about three or four days later, they were, they were permitted to... Um, to have the, the material cut, permitted by the... Heavies. The heavies. Mm. So their lips were still sewn together. Mm. No, one, no one removed it until they asked for it. No. 
and they'd been intimidated into doing it. Mm. Uh, when, the, when the lips were unstitched, yeah. were they put to another uh, part of the facility or were they put back into their tent? Oh, just back into the tent. There was nowhere else for them to go. Back with the guys that did yeah, it to them? Yeah, yeah. You're the risk assessment officer. You're the O&H officer. Mm. You're the intelligence officer. Mm. What did you do? I resign. Rod St George believes there are many staff in the camp who will corroborate his story if released from contracts that threaten imprisonment to those who speak out about the company or the department. There was no doubt among the senior members of some of the NGOs that if this was not dealt with that there would be a royal commission. NGOs, lawyers and the media have been unable to shine a light into the dark corners of Manus Island. Crying out, please, please help. Perhaps too remote a problem in too remote a place for even a government to really see inside.